let AI serve you. Start building your own AI system using NAN from zero. So today we're gonna grab events from your Google Calendar, fetch today's top headlines, connect these to LLM for a personalized daily digest sent right to your Gmail. So this is the official website straight from the NEN team. They actually offer a 14 days free trial when you can mess around with the NEN platform. So all hosted by their own team. So this is actually really good. Just pop in your info, like any email address and you'll get that free trial. It's a great way to see if NEN is the right platform for you. And now, if you're not keen on paying for a third-party hosted platform like we do, uh, don't worry, you can actually host NAN yourself right on your own machine. We'll drop a link down below to how to set up your own locally hosted NAN instance. So please feel free to check that out. So once you've signed that up, you'll land on the platform that looks something like this. Just hit create workflow to kick off your first project on an empty canvas. So I'm going to introduce a super basic node called manual trigger. It's basically uh, where any basic workflow begins. So meaning you just click to get your workflow going. And right here, there aren't any, but if you do have something to input, for example, you could do set mock data like this to simulate data flowing into your workflow. And this format is called JSON. This is a fundamental data structure, essentially how NAN handles all its data. Now let's add another node uh, called edit field. So this is basically where you can format the data that you received from the previous node and format whatever you like. For example, I can call the rename the name as username right here. And for example, rename the code as user code. So this is basically letting you to totally rearrange your data, capture what you are interested in. And here comes our main dishes. We'll dive way deeper into each of the nodes um, by building a pretty straightforward flow that grabs events from our Google Calendar. And on a separate branch, we're gonna just pull some news headlines that you're interested from today. And then those branches will connect the LLM and output whatever we want to send straight to your or my Gmail. Uh, think of it as your daily digest, daily refresh, tailor made for you. So we're going to build the workflow from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do here is to create a Google Calendar node. And let's select get many events because we essentially want to snack every event from today or whatever time frame that you defined from your Google Calendar. And the most important thing right here is to create a credential. And you can already see I have several credentials set up, but let's create a new one. And the way to get the client ID and client secret is to go to the Google console. I'll put this link down below for you to easily copy and paste. And this is essentially where you will be managing all of your Google Cloud related accounts. Okay, now let's click on the APIs and Services tab. Click on the OAuth content screen. And if this is your very first time being here, you wouldn't have any project as shown like any and demo up here. So what you need to do is to create a new project. Um, configure a project name with your organization and location. It could be anything or no, it doesn't really matter. And now I will use my initiated project in a demo to get started. So firstly, to configure, um, enter a name for the app and input a user support email. Could be any email that you have access to. And for the audience, let's click external. And for the contact information, yeah, similarly could be any email you have access to. It doesn't really matter. And click agree and now create. Sweet. So back to the OAuth overview page, you can see everything is still empty here. So you're going to click on the clients tab, create a client with the web application type. And to retrieve the authorized redirect your eyes, you would want to go to your NN flow, copy this and then paste it back in and then hit create. So here you go. Here's the client ID and client secret that you can copy and paste it back to your flow. Like this, this, 
So now we want to sign in with Google, but before that, you will also need to go back to the user section and add your email address there. This is an important one. So Google knows that it's you, this specific user, um, are going to just use this authentication with legitimate request. And so once you've done that, you will go back to any end and re-signing with Google. You can just click sign with Google, choose the account that you authorized, and then allow, you're gonna see connection successful. It makes your credential is now all set up. Um, this whole process sounds tedious, but don't worry. This is a one-time effort if you're going to use this credential from flow to flow. But you will still be seeing the red flag over here. So we need a final step, which is to enable the necessary APIs for this function. So let's go back to the search bar on the Cloud Console page and search for Gmail API. Click it, and then here's the API you need to enable. You're also gonna do the same thing for whatever API you want for your flow in the future, like Google Sheet and so on. And this time, what we'll need additionally is a Google Calendar uh, API. So same stuff. This allows anyone to start accessing your calendar in Gmail all authenticated and good to go. And in the future, if you ever decide you don't need any to access your stuff anymore, just want to disable it, you can just click a disable API here. Um, so just to be safe. So super easy. Now just choose the credential that you just set up and you can see the red flag disappearing. We are all good to go. So right now let's take a look at my Google Calendar to see what I have. I see I have two upcoming events to be included to the flow. So let's try execute this. And you can indeed see both events popping up with their associated details. But you definitely don't want your assistant telling you your schedule in this format. So we somehow need to reformat it. So let's move on to the next note, which is date and time. Um, this is really useful for a bunch of operations involving date. And this time we choose format a date. So basically you just drag and drop the start date time into the field. So any end will automatically handle the date formatting for you. Um, you can see we have a bunch of options to choose from and you can even customize the format. For example, um, you can do year month and date, hour, and then second. And then click execute, you can see it's popping up and you can even add a character A to see AM or PM. So that's super handy. The last thing for this branch is to add a note which is called edit fields by which we basically just want to extract all the data we are interested in into a single field so we can easily fit this data into our next node. And so I'm going to name it as something like event summary. And then basically I want to capture the, for example, event summary with its formatted date into this field. So we can click execute and we can see both of the events are integrated really nicely with its corresponding date. So we can feed that into the next step. All right, so that upper branch is done. And next up, besides the calendar event, we want to grab some news to get your daily refresh every day, starting from your morning off right. So we'll need this node. And to get these RSS URLs, you will basically go to your favorite GPT, ask for some RSS feed from, let's say, CNN tech stories. And here you go. You can just copy this URL, paste it back to the field. Super easy, super quick. And here you're going to see all of the latest stories from CNN Tech feed popping right up. Basically the content, headlines, snippets. Perfect. And maybe you're only interested in, let's say, AI. You want to do some filtering, for example. You can search for the contents, which only contains AI. 
And just like that, we filter it down to a couple of news stories that are all about AI. And so final step is to uh, define a node to get the data that we actually care about. And maybe here we can just define a new field called news and then grab the contents and probably the citation link so we can dig deeper. And finally, we can click execute. Then you can see here's the content and the link, and then we're done with this branch. So in this section, we basically prepped all the data our LLM needs to update you daily. And next up, we're gonna merge these two branches together using the merge node, which is super helpful for you to combine your data from different branches. And let's try link them together. And right now, hit execute. As you can see, we have five different rows. So there are like two rows from your first branch and then three rows, three news from your second branch. But that's not quite enough because right now there are five separate items there. They'll be processed individually and we don't want that. We just want LLM to handle all at once. So we need an aggregate node. And then here we want the event summary for the first to be aggregated and the news for the second. And we're basically aggregating these two fields so that we can put all the rows into a single array. And now you can see we've got two events for our summary, three news item in the news field. And now we just have one item here. So now we're ready to unleash the power of large language model. And in this case, I'm gonna use Gemini and we can choose message and model in this case. And to use Gemini for an API call, you're gonna need an API key. So I'm going to this page and I'm gonna put this link along with the ChatGPT one down below. Um, and let's create an API key. And as you remember, we have already created a project uh, in Google Cloud in the previous steps. So you can use this one or just create the one for new project. It doesn't really matter. So let's click create. Uh, now we have the API key to be pasted back to the credential generation step. And don't worry, it's a one-time effort if you're not going to change the credential from flow to flow. And probably you would also want to rename the credential a bit so that you wouldn't get confused in the future. So now we have finished the credential part and we can then choose a model at your preference, uh, 2.5 flash in this case, and then paste a prompt in, in which I'm going to tell Gemini to create a HTML file for email generation using the data that I provided. So basically that's the system prompt. And right now I'm going to link that to input my user prompt, which contains the event summary and also the news. Now we've got the actual response item in HTML to be ready to be sent in the next step via the email. And if you prefer ChatGPT, you can also do the same thing in a parallel manner, um, nearly in an identical way. So message and model, uh, you will also need an OpenAI API key in this case. And Exactly, you can just choose from the model choices down below in the drop-down list, for example, GPT 4.1 mini, and then paste it in the identical prompt as we did for Gemini. This is a system prompt. And then we're, we're now gonna link this, oh no, not subsequently, it's in the parallel manner to Gemini. So choose either of them. So for user prompt, you're gonna provide the data, which is the event summary data and also the news data. So this is the user prompt and then click execute. And at the same time, I'm gonna showcase um, how to retrieve the API key for ChatGPT. It's actually in a very similar way. So you just register it and then copy that API key back and create the credential. Both links are down below. So right now you can choose either Gemini or ChatGPT in this case. Here we go. Okay, so the final step is to send email to ourselves or whoever you like. <laughs> so let's send a message, uh, choose the credential that we generated um, on the Google console. It's all set. So uh, for example, I'll 
set the email to myself and then with a daily digest subject in the HTML format because that's what we got from Gemini or ChatGPT and click execute you'll see the email is set and here's my email uh, these are some marked upcoming events along with today's news related to AI and because I also appended that citation link um, you can also click read more so it will direct you to the actual news how nice is that and so uh, finally I'm gonna introduce another trigger because basically we don't want it to be manually triggered every day we want a schedule trigger so let's replace the current node for example we want to do every day um 7 a.m let's say um and click we can just delete the current manually clicking node with the schedule trigger and then after linking the whole thing and clicking execute the workflow will be sending email to you to myself like um 7 a.m every day so that's actually everything i wanted to share with you today and i hope you enjoy it um i'll catch up with you in the next video soon